Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this week's episode of The Outpost on the CW, which was episode 2 of season 1, called Two Heads Are Better Than None. I think that's true. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I reviewed the premiere last week of The Outpost, and uh, and going forward, I, I'm i still going to try, you know, I think I'm going to give it a couple more episodes, at least to review week to week. Um, anyway, I was sort of lukewarm about the premiere last week. I gave it like a 7.5, I think. Um, and this episode, while I, I do think it's a tad better, um, I can't say I'm like overly, you know, into it. Um, although I see a lot of people complaining about the production value, you know, their budget and stuff like that. I swear, people act like uh, they just like choose how much money they get to use on it. You know, it's like it's like their choice if it looks like a cheaper production. You know, I'm sure if they had the money, they'd make it look even better. Um, you know, so I try not to hold a budget against a, you know a film or a show too much. Um, although I do think they gotta stop having shots on that uh, walkway, you know, showing the landscape because you know it's kind of obvious, but still. <laughs> Um, I try not to hold things like that against, uh, anyone. Um, but yeah, this episode I think was a tad better. It, like I said, it's just not really pulling me in yet. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm understanding it a little bit more, though, because it is a production from a company called Aerostorm Entertainment. And, you know, they're known for doing a lot of lower budget, you know, fantasy, adventure, action type shows. Um, and I actually really enjoy their, uh, Mythica films for what they are. Um, and I think if you're used to things like that, you can sort of get past, uh, lower budget stuff a bit more. Um, but one thing I, I can agree on a little bit, I think some of the acting is pretty wooden on the show so far. I do think Jessica, um, I almost said Jessica Jones, I do feel like, uh, Jessica Green is, uh, doing a fine job. She's definitely the most charismatic, uh, actor on the show. Um, you know, I think Jake Stroman, he's, he's fine. Um... Let me just go to the cast list real quick so I don't forget. Give me a quick second. Andrew Howard, I uh, I praised him a little bit last week because he's been on a lot of shows. He was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. recently. He had a pretty uh, cool brief role on uh, Banshee, one of my all-time favorite shows. Um, you know, he's done a lot of stuff, so I'm glad he has this like regular role as uh, Marshall Withers. Um, and we'll talk more about him in this episode in a second, but I feel like they really gotta add more to these you know, some of these characters as well. There are a lot of cliches and things I've seen a lot um, in other shows and movies. Um, the only one who has any like sort of complexity to him is uh, Talon in a way. And, uh, you know, Jessica Green's character, of course. And I also gotta agree with some people that say, uh, you know, she, she is, you know, very skilled, and, you know, and she has charisma to her, and I do like her. Um, but they really gotta step up their character a little bit more because right now she's like the main thing holding the show up for me. Um, and you know, it is a bit, uh, it is a bit odd that, you know, she keeps being, uh, saved by everyone. You know, she's saved by, uh, you know, Garrett, you know, Jake Stroman's character. She's, she was kind of saved by Gwen this week. She was saved a couple times in the premiere. Um, you gotta really establish how well she can handle herself, and and you know, they do sometimes, but then they have her get saved a couple scenes later, and I, I don't know, it is kind of, I don't know, it's a little kind of contradictory sometimes. 
Um, although I know even though skilled fighters they get into spots sometimes, and with, with her being captured this time, she really couldn't do anything out of that position unless she wanted to massacre like nine people, <laughs> um, which I don't think really looks good for. Um, yeah, so there are uh, there are explanations. Sometimes I I think people are uh, kind of overlooking as they complain about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall this episode, two heads are burned, living on. Um, I like the introduction of that weird demon thing that came out of came out of the uh, spell with her reading it off. Um, you know, CG wasn't you know great, of course, but again, I can't. I'm not one to put down the budget too much. You just kind of gotta get used to it. Um, Although I think it did look, it had an alright design, I think it did look a little bit better when it was uh, sort of in the dark a little bit. Um, then it actually flies off and it's still out there somewhere. And it kind of had the feel of uh, maybe this thing's going to come back and maybe it'll actually be an ally of Talon, sort of like a, a pet, I guess, maybe. I could see that. It could be kind of a fun, cute little thing. <laughs> um, so I did kind of like that. And it adds more intrigue to all this Blackfoot, uh, Blackfoot stuff. Um, it's a little bit surprising that Mar Marshall Withers doesn't appear to know anything about this uh, black blood, uh, black blood, anything, um, you know, because he knows, uh, you know, there's, uh, I forget the guy's name, all of a sudden, excuse me, but yeah, basically, the man that killed Talon's family, the one that, you know, led it, um, you know, the creepy looking guy, the red and the white. Um, that he has this word out for him, but apparently, uh, Withers does not have any idea what the Black Bloods are, I guess. I, I don't know. It's like a secret thing, but when it's not, then it is. <laughs> um, and the fight in the pub or the bar or whatever, uh, I thought it was, you know, fine. Um, again, uh, one of my other complaints last week was that the, you know, it, it felt too staged and the choreography was kind of weak or it wasn't really done fast enough, so it's like very clear. That they're kind of like going through, a, you know, one of the rehearsals or something. Um, it was like they were still rehearsing because it didn't really look that natural. Um, you know, there's still like a lot of, you can tell, like a lot of setup little moments and stuff like that. Um, and again, that's not so much for the budget, it's actually more so what they're doing with the choreography and everything, um, or how well they're doing it. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's alright, I guess. Um, and he had uh, Robin Malcolm's character, you know, she, I didn't really care about her storyline, honestly. Honestly, whenever it goes away from Talon, I can't say I'm not interested in anyone. Um, so I'm kind of okay, let's see what's going on with Talon here. Um, you know, just the dealings within the, within the outpost, I'm, I just really don't care to pay attention to. Um, but overall, I, I also did like the, uh, I think the older man, Jams, though, that saved her. I do like him as, uh, no, Janzo. Why did I say Janzo? Mm -hmm. uh, although, you know, I, I did like uh, Don Jose Baracha's acting as Janzo, you know, the one who ma makes the drinks and everything, I, you know, uh, patched her up a little bit more. Um, I did like their dynamic, and I sort of liked his acting with how desperate and sort of like uh, concerned he was for with the wound and everything, still trying to walk with it. And, uh, I forget the guy's name, but the older man that saved her, I think he's gonna end up being the archer that spared her when she was a kid. Um, and I, I do like their dynamic, you know, just the old mentor, you know, thing going on there, which we've seen a lot of this stuff, but I think the actor they have for it's alright. So, uh, yeah, and at the end she, uh, she is freed by Gwen, um, basically taking on the responsibility herself. Um, and now, as in the previews, she can't commit any crimes or it's off of both of their heads, <laughs> you know, so we'll see. Um, and I do hope they add more to Andrew Howard's character with theirs. Um, you know, he's trying to do his job, but at the same time you can tell he's just kind of being a dick to be a dick. I, I hope they add more, you know, complexity to him in this position. Because they could, you know, there's definitely shows I've gone into, you know, uh, different people's perspectives and you kind of get both sides, so hopefully they do, they do that here with this type of scenario. Um, yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, overall, uh, I decided to give last week's episode a 7.5, I might have to bump that down to like a 7.3, um, and maybe I'll give this one about like a 7.4, 7.6, somewhere in there. So I'm not over overly impressed by it, but I'm, I'm trying to give more time, and I do like Jessica Green's talent. I just hope they uh, use her a little more correctly, a little more often, um, and I hope they have a uh, fight scene that I actually get really entertained by at some point. And maybe the other supporting characters get more interesting. 
But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I do like the demon thing and the whole uh, details to keep on adding to what talent is, and I think it's intriguing, so we'll see more of that. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about uh, the second episode of The Outpost. What's your stance on the show right now? Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.